And five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's that chick AJ. Yeah, Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, bangers, bangers on 2023. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Just for you and me. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Before we start anything, my nigga, Angel, <laughs> done been honored with the biggest honor ever. Shout out to Alcorn State Marching Alcorn, Band. Alcorn, I found out the right name. Alcorn. 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 Sounds of dynamite. I'm going to open my legs. Give me two. Margarita. Golden Girls 2023 versus McNeese State. Give me three. Margaritas. An HBCU band done. Give me three. Margaritas. I'm going to put Play it in my Play Angel song. Margaritas. I'm going to put it in my tongue. I five. said what you said. I can't even believe it. Give me one. Two. Give me three. Margar four. Margar five. Margaritas. Go in it with my baby. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'll get my man. Oh, now, my. I'll this is so forget. dope, Angel. I lost it. Do you hear him? I hear him. Bum, bum, bum. Drumline 2. <laughs> Return of the Black Mouse. Listen, I'm going to be Petey Pablo coming out. <laughs> I told y'all. <laughs> it sounds so dope on the big band. It does. Dun, 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 See, dun, dun. Orlando uh, Jones wouldn't have let them play this. Oh, absolutely he not. He was flapping the bubble me. Yeah. Well, we, don't want, we need to play one margarita. One margarita. We ain't playing with my career. We don't want to go no fly to the bumblebee. Listen, let me get on my poise underwear and I'm dancing with them girls. Because I will piss. Because they be. <laughs> what did it feel like, Angel? What did it feel like when you saw this? And they got the majorettes, the golden girls. That is. Like, all corn done, done honored you with the black is black. The. I. They have no idea. <laughs> they have. No clue. They bless your little PWI heart. Yeah, like, you have no I, I was UK like, could never do this for you. University of Kentucky would never. What's she say? Exceedingly. Hey! Abundantly. Hey! Above all that. Hey! I would have never thought that something like this would happen in my lifetime. And it did. And it did. Huh? That's that's the Grammy. I mean, I still want one of those too. But let me tell you, this is verified by the streets. By the streets. These babies ain't number eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Somebody put this in sheet music. This is what I need you to understand. That's what's cool. <laughs> they said one, give you head, ba ba ba. Yes. Okay, now da, I'm gonna da, da, go da, da, da. <laughs> quarter, eighth note, ba da 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 ba. Okay, when she go open my legs. Yeah. Okay, that was on the ba that's the bass and the treble on the yes. left. Everybody, what's it? Every every good bear does fine. Yeah, uh-huh. And face. Yes, there you go. You got it. You better know these notes. Step them up. Them sex jokes was all up in quarter. And somebody, <laughs> give me one uh -huh. margarita. I'm going to give you some head. Hit yeah. that F sharp. Ba -da 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 -da. That's that F sharp on head. Yes. <laughs> head, <laughs> head, <laughs> head. A baby <laughs> did that. I cannot even... I can't even. I it literally it was so funny. I'm playing it. I was playing it and I was looking at my husband and I said, "Is that my song?" And he said, "Nigga, yes." I was like, ah! "Cuz it sounds so it sounds so different and so good. There's something about hearing a black band play yeah. popular music that just gives yeah. it a different type of swag." Uh, like they had a meeting. This was suggest like this this just the end product. They, they Somebody said, "Why do we do? Why do we do one margarita?" They was in the summer. Somebody did that. Somebody, Somebody did. was sweating to your music. They had the the quad. For you, and the bass boy said, "Boom." It was big. Yes. <laughs> boom, boom. There was a break where the they got dum, 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 where they got the rock. I want to see dum. the drum major come. I wanna... <laughs> come on, Kevin. Back bend. Ah, oh. ah, see, I'm about to say. You gotta drink. I was like, I can't catch you from this way. <laughs> you all I drink no water this morning. You doing all that, man. But yeah. Oh, oh, this, this podcast, sorry, is sponsored by. Oh, shoot. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's sponsored by Next Evo. Lumi Factor. ZocDoc will tell you more about it in the podcast. But yeah, it is such an honor. I, I was like, hold on now, HBCUs. Angel will show up. Like, homecoming season. Corn. Play me a little coin and I'll show up. You can listen. I, there's so many. <laughs> I tried to book uh, Darren Brand during homecoming season. Mm -hmm. He was like, boy, is you crazy? It is homecoming. This is time. homecoming. J H O E. Yeah. Greatest homecoming. I got. I'm going here, there, and everywhere. Absolutely. We're gonna be making money all fall. That's what I would like. You got to the do. G. You got the uh, Delta D D nine. Yes. Huh? I'm like, have me show up. Okay. And I do more than one margarita. I'm not gonna sing nothing else, but I'm a good time. <laughs> I'm a good guy that on time. We're gonna have a party. I wish we had done the album when y'all when I when I suggested it, man. You know, Josh, how have you been? <laughs> I've been great. Yeah. You know, I just good. I'm excited to be back here. Yeah. yeah. Uh we're home for a little bit. Yeah. You know, we got Europe coming up, Kev. You wanna talk about the shows? Man, what the hell's going on in Berlin <laughs> and Paris? Oh no, the Germany is not pulling it's, up. The, let me tell you who's gonna be at this show. One, two, three, four. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16. About two deaths worth of Funko oh, Pops. Funko Pops is showing up. It's That's why here's the thing ain't going. Mark, uh, no, Mark, Kevin was like, since we already going in uh, Listen, October. Now, we London, ain't y'all doing y'all thing, isn't it? Y'all is, is selling well. If y'all could tell people down Germany, down France. But it don't matter. We pulling up regardless. Yeah, I'm about I'm not to pull up anyway. Yourself. It's gonna be a good time. So please buy those tickets. Uh, support us. Anything else you have? Uh, also, Andre Andrea Bailey, shout out Patreon producer Andrea Bailey wants to talk about your song. Oh, thank you. I appreciate Patreon that. Being there and so, just putting that together the whole episode. So exciting. Now before we before we cry, you okay? At least I cry. Yeah, I yeah, know you are. Shout out T Swinton. He asked. He or she asked. I don't know. There's no profile picture. They said, "What about what was uh, talk about Tony's movie?" So we went down, me and Liz and Mel and Greg went down to Sinopolis. Is that where it was playing at? Okay. Sinopolis, Inglewood. I like Sinopolis. Marcus was like, where is it at? I said, I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't know Although either. I do want to say, um, there is a ceiling to how good food in movie theaters can ever be. Mm -hmm. Like, I get what y'all trying to do. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we got steaks. We got chicken salad. The ceiling is there. No, oh, okay. It's never going to get much better than Applebee's. Luckily... I don't mind Applebee's. Mm -hmm. Love they, Applebee's. They got a good happy hour. They, did what? they have a to seafood this day, towel? I'll knock back some, like, they, those, <laughs> those little boneless. Yeah, I got some nachos, and it got me a little strong drink now. Yeah, they do got me a strong drink. But to watch Tony the Baker on the... Uh, big screen. And I'm talking about, he was big as this Yay. room. Being who he was, I, I could have shed a tear. Yeah. I sat on the front row, not by choice. That was the only tickets left. <laughs> right, exactly. My neck was hurting. Of course. But for Tony, I would do it. And he was very funny. Uh, he was a little bit of a jerk, though, because during the Q&A, uh, there was a whole bunch of Black Dynamite fans there, mm -hmm. like talking to Michael Jai White about Black yeah. Dynamite. Um, Black Dynamite this, Black Dynamite that. Somebody asked Tony a question, and he was like, next to Michael Jai White. Oh, yeah, Kevin ain't seen Black, Black Dynamite till last week. The oh. whole theater is like, oh, oh. Neil, you need to leave. Yeah. It was like, why would you yeah. say that in these people? And then people worship that black dynamite. Oh, yeah. It's a cult uh, It's classic. a cult classic. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. It's so funny. I My have kids, another homegirl in there, too. Yeah. Uh, but Tony was amazing. It was like, you know, that's why I don't have that many friends, because when you have real friends, you got to show up into their stuff. There's a lot of be a lot of things too. So that's why I, I, I saw this thing on Twitter. You got weak ties. I got a lot of weak ties. Mm. You know what I'm saying? People, I say hello to people in the industry, my neighbor, but my strong ties. People in this room, I, I go to mm. stuff I don't when I don't want to. He mm. said, "Did you not want to go? Is it because no, no, no? I, I wanted to go to that, uh -huh. but I, because you're my friend, I will go to stuff when I don't want that's to. That's exactly that's. What but I, I got to keep friends. that to a little limited. Yeah, because you can only stretch yourself so much. Yeah, I was one. I actually had said to Marcus, I I'm said, sorry, the movie's called Out Loud Johnny Black, my bad. I was, I didn't know that there was a screening. I literally Minion. said to Marcus this weekend, I said, I don't understand why there's not a screening or I something. I saw Tony for, talking about it on Instagram. I, I didn't even I, tell him I, I was going. I thought he was just doing a QA. Yeah. <laughs> literally, I thought it was just going to be a room full of uh, fans and he was just going to be answering questions about the movies. I did not know it was going to be held in a movie theater with the movie to follow. Yeah. That's all yeah. right. We're going to do something else and we're going to make sure we see it. 
Josh, Let's do it. we gonna do it because I really was like, should we be rolling up on Tony? I was like, where is the? I was like, I don't understand. Is there? A I was screen? really surprised y'all didn't pull up. I thought y'all were his friends. Oh, we're terrible friends. I was in town and calling. I didn't know there was a screener. Yeah, I would never go out of town for Tony's screen. So of course he you goes all, out of town all the time for stuff that we do, Angel. No. <laughs> Your birthday all, right, all, right. all the time. I will lose this. I will lose this. I will lose this. I was just playing a joke. I was just playing a joke. I was playing a joke. All right, the Patreon producers by and large want to talk about this. Shout out Sharana Harris. She just typed in the Patreon, Kirk Franklin. Oh. Now, if you're unfamiliar, oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you what we got today. Is Kirk Franklin true? doc. We got Tyler Perry in black women's business. Cardi B offset and Nicki Minaj husband, who is, might be the most embarrassing husband. Uh, that's on the docket. Okay. Well, I got a nice little interesting piece of information to give Ooh, you that this is one. Good. But let's start out with Kirk Franklin. Kirkland signature Franklin. Come on, Kirk. Got a new album coming out called Father's Day. His rollout has been creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, it started off with an Instagram post of him getting his mouth swabbed. And it was something, the caption was something along the lines of, this is going to be the most crazy Father's Day ever. Right? So, right then, the rumors start to swirl in. Okay. I'm getting texts because people know I know Kirkland's signature, frankly. Mm -hmm. They like, Kev, what's going on? He got he got a side baby. He got this. I said, I don't think if Kirk had a side baby, he would be showing himself getting suave because I don't think he'd embarrass Tammy that way. Right. Right. I so don't I don't think, think he'd make content promo. about side baby. Okay. <laughs> but you know how folks get. If you don't and, tell them nothing, the comments and was let off. alone name it Father's Day. Yeah, I don't right. think that's would be a rollout plan. Not for a gospel album. No. I had a side baby. <laughs> that doesn't seem in right. The name of the Lord. <laughs> My peens slipped in <laughs> different coochie. Hallelujah. Come on, yeah. hallelujah. Baby. So I was like, I was telling my friends in the group chat, I was like, I think Kirk might have, this is going to be about him finding his real dad. I see, I didn't even know Kirk didn't know his real dad. I, that's what I thought. Well, you know, he was adopted. If you listen to, uh, um, the rebirth of Kirk Franklin. Uh, oh, stop crying. Stop crying. Shut up. Mama just needs to hold the baby just for two days. Girl, what you doing? I'm just an old woman. On, I can't going. raise no more children. You know, I'm a widow. I don't get much money for two days, mama. Mama, would you please give me this baby? Huh? Give me this baby. Wee, wee, Come, hee, on. Hee. Come on, girl. Shut up. I'm coming. You ain't going to do nothing. Uh. Go home, baby. Go and bless him. Make him to a great man of God. Uh -huh. Use him for your glory. <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever seen before in my life. And then it turns into Kirk's voice. Okay, so I can and I can be able to be used by you. All right, come on, Kirk. All right, all right. That's pretty much. The first. I wonder how close I got that. Bravo! Hold on, Bravo! let me see. <laughs> let me see how close I got that. That was I'm the pretty best. close. Hold on, let's listen to it real quick. That was great. I forgot it's I want to go home now. You're the nigga in the back. Hurry up. Shh, shh, shh. It, it's me, Mama. Open the door. Well, what is it? Mama, I, I tried to call you before I came over, but you didn't answer the phone. Well, it's 3 o'clock in the, the morning. morning. I was asleep. Now, what did you expect? Mama, 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 I just need for you to do it for me one more time, okay? Just one more this time. This is the third time. time this week. Oh, Mama. Mr. B. Oh, no, I can't oh, raise no more children. That was great, Cap. That was amazing. So I, I'm like, he you probably should wanted, I should. My <laughs> friend said I was good. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking about his real dad. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But then I realized I don't know much about this situation. Like I know he was adopted uh, by Gertrude, but after that, I don't know anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is kind of crazy. And then he goes into a, um, a voicemail. Right on. This is on the Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going to a voicemail, and it's like, well, if you want to hear them, if you, if the rumors ain't too much, then then you know you can call me. And I'm said, oh, so I start getting texts from the group chat. You was right, Kev. It's his daddy. It's his daddy. And I'm like, oh snap, oh snap. So then he puts on his Instagram Father's Day the documentary. Wait a minute. Does this does this at all tie into the Facetime call you got the other week? Yes. Okay, so you going to have to. You, you but that was before this. The FaceTime call The FaceTime call was before, before the documentary. He was like, what do you think about the rollout? And I was like, no, this is crazy. I'm invested, blah, blah, blah. This is what, this is what it was about. This He album was about, asking what you thought. He was asking me. Kirkland's signature, so frankly. Much. I am stressed. I wish I had my name. <laughs> 
next Evo here so I can de stress. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> Next Evo is one of my favorite products in my household because when I tell you I am in a stressful time of life, okay? <laughs> you hit that note, though. Uh, life, okay? So whether you need to de-stress or just keep your sleep schedule together, okay, CBD can help. But don't just settle for any type of CBD product because half of them, I'm just going to tell you, the, the labels be lying, straight up lying. They're way off and they only contain about 60% of what they claim. Melatonin products can be very inaccurate too. And who wants to do that? When you try to get sleep, give me what you say you got in here. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you about Next Evo Naturals. We are users of Next Evo Naturals, excuse me, in our household. Marcus actually just ordered some another bottle because he had used up all of uh, the sleeping ones to help him. Uh, it's He uses the CBD, triple action CBD sleep because his mind just takes a while to calm down at night. And so a lot of times he's up. But this has been one of the few things that he has used that has actually kept him calm, cool, collected. And I personally love CBD as a sleep, um, as a stress reliever to help me de-stress. I have tried other things. They are too strong. CBD <laughs> from Next Evo. You want to talk about that later? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> CBD from Next Evo is perfect. It's so perfect for me. It gives me in just the mood that I want to be in. A recent lab study found out that the, the most of the top CBD brands contain as little as 60% of what the labels claim. So you're not getting what you paid for. Next Evo tests their products multiple times to ensure you get 100% of what's on the label. They do their research as demonstrated by four clinical trials. No other CBD brand comes close next evo has you covered for better sleep and wellness um stress cbd complex gummies are clinically proven to reduce stress up to 70 percent. no prescription needed and um the triple action cbd sleep calms your mind with fast absorbing cbd then both <coughs> both fast acting and control release melatonin help you fall asleep stay asleep and wake up refreshed leave some of stress behind and upgrade your CBD. Go to nextevo.com slash SK. SK. To get 25% off a f and a free bottle of Premium Pure CBD, which is a $50 value, limited one use per customer. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com slash SK. SK. According to an independent and randomized study by Coral Reef Labs, a Pennsylvania state approved an ISO accredited cannabis testing laboratory. All right. So, so what happens is, boom, everybody's talking about, I actually saw, saw Candace, um, <clears throat> Bimbo mm -hmm. and Marie Bimbo, uh, Bim Bimbo, 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 uh, talking about it. So I go and watch it right now. Uh, when I tell you, it's short and sweet too. Thirty-five I minutes. It. I of love pure, the length. Listen, I I can't wait to see the album. Like listen to the album. All right, guys, whatever. He sent me the album. I've listened to of it. Of course you have. We ain't nobody. But I I I I can't imagine. There are some things this documentary will do for people that the music can't, can't. do. Uh -huh. This is a different approach. And listen, I love a lot of gospel artists. I love you all. No one is on Kirk's level as an artist. Yeah, Kurt is on a Kirk, excuse me, is on a different planet than the rest of he's us. On a, he's and I asked him what's the key when I was at his studio in Dallas one time. And we were there yeah. where they shot the documentary. Yes. Uh, and he said, the key is I have young people yeah, and I listen young, to them. Yeah. Stays in touch. And that's the difference. Tap D. So, <clears throat> so let's start. Boom. Starts off with um, a rumor. One of his singers uh, goes to a funeral. Right. Right. Just very happenstance. Right. Goes to a funeral and the, a man named Mr. Rick. Uh, he, hears, he didn't go to just any funeral. He, it was her, his oh. uncle's funeral. It was His, Deborah's. It wasn't it Deborah's brother. Yes, somebody in the family. Yeah, I thought he said Deborah's yes. brother. So Auntie Deborah, right? Auntie Sandra. Auntie Sandra. And you better say it, right? And you better say it. We'll get there. We'll Just get to. That. We'll get to that. Who you trying to say? But, yeah. but very run of the mill. Just happened to say, oh, you know what? I used to date Deborah. Right. Mm. Uh, just like an off chance, off offhand comment. Right. So. Boom, 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 whoop de whoop. He ends up being like, people end up people end up being like, you know, 
he kind of looked like Kirk. Yeah, look at the ears and nose, the height. Now, Melissa sent me a picture of them too. I say, whoa. Yeah. This whole bit yeah. right here, yeah. that's that daddy's face, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so Mr. Rick gets a DNA test, mm -hmm. right? Swab, swab. Kirk, swab, swab. He sends it to Kirk. Right? I'm just, well, Kirk's uh, doctor, mm -hmm. right? And he on the phone with the doctor, and the doctor like 99.99. Nine, the amount of nine she said. Because that's was how many so be on there. It'd be a lot. <laughs> They'd be like, no, for real, for real, though. So she like 99.999 that he is his dad. He is his birth father. Now, when I say real dad, I mean birth father. Y'all, people in the comments like, real dad? Scrunchy face. Listen, old time her terms die hard. Y'all know what I mean. I'm not going to be over here learning everything on the go. So, Kirk just buried a few years ago the man he thought was his, was his father. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and lived his life with a lot of anger towards that man. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I never knew Kirk, this part of Kirk. I did not know. I this, feel like a lot of people didn't know that. I thought his adopted mother was older. She passed away and that was it. He, you know, been living his life yeah. unbeknownst to me, his close friend. So he, so the little uh, graphic is like, Kirk has not seen his, his birth mother in 23 20, years. 23 23 years. Full time then moved. Do you hear Man, me? Man, right? And I like because I have a relatively good relationship with my family, I think sometimes I fall into the trap of thinking that's the case for everybody. Ah. Even though my, you know, me and my birth father don't have the closest relationship, my mom, my dad, my grandma, aunt, sister, we be talking. How, if you don't I ain't talked to my brother in a minute. It's probably been about Shut up. Um, I haven't talked to him. Damn it, Kevin. Kevin. What I was going to ask is when when's the last time you've seen your birth father? Ooh. <laughs> seen? Mm. Yeah, because that's Kurt had not he hadn't seen or talked to. Hold up now. It ain't been 23. Uh-huh, but you close, ain't How it? How long Mel and Greg been married? Ain't Nine? It. Nah, uh-huh. <clears throat> Ain't it? It's been nine years. Oh wow! It ain't that nine that snuck up on me. Mm, I went to. So you. when when Mel and Greg got married, she had a bachelorette party, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Greg had already had his bachelor party before Melissa and I got down there. At that time, we didn't have money to travel for long. Yeah, it was like a day before the wedding and a, and a day and a half. Come on, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> so we I came in enough time. Melissa went to the bachelorette party and they had like a tea or something like that. And my my birth father lived in Alabama. So I took me and Zay Zay and Jojo, drove down to Alabama, hugged their necks, and spent the night, pictures, pictures, and left. We talked, but I ain't been down. To, mm -hmm. I don't visit you Alabama say, I do often. Not do. And I he do not don't do. be able, he's not able to travel to LA like that, nor much places, because he uh uh be on the road. He's a truck driver. And he, oh, you know what I'm okay, saying? You gotta, gotta be on that road to make yeah. that bread. So it's been about nine. I didn't even know that. Dang, dang. Why you bring my life up? Nah, hush. Listen, listen. Because so. <laughs> listen, you were like, I mean, great, great relationship. I'm like, Kevin. No, I said outside of him. <laughs> That's the what rest of my family. Right. We talking about biological Kirk Father's Day. That's, That's why right. I said That's what we talking about. Yeah, talking come on. That, 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 you talking about that one that put that peen in that machine. Come, come on, period. right? Go ahead. So boom. So now I'm a listen. Th this is this is just Kevin the the consumer. The mm -hmm. watcher, not the therapist version. This is just my initial reaction. You're also kept the substitute, though. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? The Isn't that what it is when you can... Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes put yes, yourself yes. in, in the, yes. their shoes. That's uh -huh. an acting skill, but you're not supposed to use your real family. Apparently, you get too emotional. I learned that. So anyway, so he goes to... I don't want to say confront, but see his, his mother, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Now, pissed off Kevin, number one. He goes and Aunt Sandra... He says, I think he says, hello, Sandra, or something yeah, he like said, that. Uh, he said, hey, Sandra. She said, hello. He was like, it's Kurt. She was like, hello, who who did you, who are you calling to speak to? Aunt <sighs> uh, Sandra, that's better. I said, Ooh. That's how y'all be with victory. <laughs> it's Aunt Ooh. Angel all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, but I've been there <laughs> the whole time. So you don't give me that off. Right. So, it was very interesting for me because I grew up with my aunts and uncles in the same home and they were not much older than us. Mm -hmm. So in our family, we did not have to call them aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. It was just, uh, Is this why you're a disrespectful man to this day. No. 
<laughs> so I call my aunt Andy. Uh, I just call her Andy. Mm-hmm. That's what they train me. So when my my mom got married to my dad, and we went to uh, Atlanta, and we was like, "Hello, teen." We have a uh, aunt teen. Hey, teen. They was like, "You disrespectful little." <laughs> help. They were so they did not like us initially. <laughs> Because they thought we were disrespectful. We didn't know. And our parents should have taught us better. Hey, down around here, put an aunt and uncle Come in on, front of I don't care if her name is Pumpkin. That's <laughs> aunt, aunt Pumpkin. pumpkin. Don't, you, you can't just call her Pumpkin. Come on. So I, I, I recoiled a little bit mm-hmm. at that because of the exact thing you thought. Yeah. If we done grew up together and we had a great relationship, obviously. If I have not known you like that and we don't have that familial bond, Period. it's going to be hard for me to give you that term of endearment right but he collected himself and did it and then he was she was like come on out he was like actually no no <laughs> i gonna stay in the car this this was two different circles. that was phone call in the car he was like she was like get your ass out of here i'm getting the, i'm getting the house he was like is is deborah here no nah, she ain't here yet have you signed the paper i'm gonna do it in the house I need you to sign the paper. I need you to sign the paperwork. And I'm just going to sit in this car until she gets here. Okay. <laughs> Why do you channel her so well? That's that 43 on you, Angel. Oh, my God. He rolled that window up like the Rihanna gym. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> said, get that evil spirit away. So, boom, right? So, he go in when Deborah get there. And this part, I, you know, on the on Get Out, when he scratched the chair, mm-hmm. like that's how tense it was. He shows Deborah, his birth mother, the uh, the results. Oh, and, and I know it wasn't intentional too, but the framing, you feel the tension in the room of how far they are away from each other. What oh, you said, yes. there was a whole uh, They mile. are the furthest. They were sitting on the the, the end pieces. <laughs> Dog, I, I didn't know. I noticed but didn't notice, but I know as a filmmaker, you probably noticed. But I felt like I'm watching this in my car in the parent line, mm-hmm. waiting for Zezé to get out of school. Why is my heart beating? I'm just like, oh, my. I was Anything. trying to edit something else at the same time as, as watch this. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be. I can't nah. do This is not a multitask <laughs> yeah. opportunity. Oh, this demands your full attention. So Deborah looks at the 99.999998. This is your uh, father. And she's like, no, no, this ain't right. <laughs> this ain't right. Kirk's like, what do you, what do you mean? No, the paper says nine, nine point. Mm-mm. Uh, but I say no. He's like, what? There is something about people in that generation that have a level of denial that is stronger than anything I've ever seen before in my life. Oh yeah. Whatever they see as the truth, mm-hmm. you can disprove it to them a hundred times over. And they're like, no, honestly, I'm not even trying to be funny and not because Tyler Perry is the next subject on here, but a lot of times Tyler Perry gets flack for creating unbelievable characters, unrealistic characters. When I saw uh, his birth mom, reject that information Mm -hmm. that is like in her mind this is not real she cannot i cannot accept this truth right because if i do then it's gonna set me up to be either a liar in the past whatever you think are going to think of me if i accept this truth i cannot accept that truth therefore i will reject something that it i mean like blatantly rejected as if it's not true. So then he gets another DNA test. Yes. With Mr. Well, no, no. Go back. Go yeah, back no, what I missed. Skip it. You, he you, didn't hasn't gone to Rick yet. Oh, I want I wanted to say Deborah, then I wanted to go Rick. Okay. So he goes and gets another one. And he is like, now mind you, 23 years done passed. Yeah. Since he's did it say seen or spoken or just seen? I know he said he hadn't spoken to her, but I doubt if he's seen her. And if he has, it's been in passing. Okay. So he takes it back again. And he is like, uh, with tears in his eyes. I and mean, although Kirk is 53 and he said this in the car right before he went in, he was like, I'm, I feel like a child. They making me feel like a child. He, the, 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 the juxtaposition between them, he might as well been 10 years old. Yeah. It was like a child trying to stand up to a parent that is like 
overbearing and you know what I'm saying? Like True. I know Kirk is a grown man mm. with grown children, but in that moment he might as well have been eleven years old. Yeah, yeah. And she saw him that way as well. She was like, Get get your ass in here. <laughs> That's the way she I was sweating. Were you? When they got to that scene in the uh, conference room where the mom was like, he was like, I need you to give me this. And I was like, come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, sis. I was sweating. Thank God I had on my Lumi because I would have been stinking while I was watching it. (laughs) You can't be musty during the documentary. Okay, you can't be musty. And I'm telling you, if you haven't seen the documentary, put your Lumi on before you watch it because every single crease and fold is going to be (laughs) perspirating. So listen, I'm going to tell you about Lumi because I feel as though Everyone should know about it. So is your de- deodorant so amazing that someone would steal it? Lumi is. And um, <laughs> I know that because someone literally did. Okay, so let me back up. Lumi is America's number one whole body deodorant, pH optimized for pits, privates, and beyond. They also have a Dio wipes for 24-hour odor control on the go and the wipes work so well that yes some deodorant bandit stole the entire the entire truckload of them from Lumi's warehouse this year Mm. somebody stole the deodorant I ain't gonna be musty I'd rather be in jail than be musty it was hard to find listen (laughs) (laughs) but to avoid California Highway Patrol I recommend just ordering on their site a special offer for new customers. Get $5 off Lumi Starter Pack with code SK. SK. At LumiDeodorant.com. Now, I use Lumi. Uh, I really started using them when me and Marcus went on tour because them plane, the air, like the heat changes. So you get on the plane, you're sweating. Yep. You stop sweating. Then you're trying to walk to the next gate and you're sweating all hard. Lumi on my balls right now. Yeah, well, good well, for you. Right? That's good. Those underneath, on, landing strip. I smell amazing. Good for you. I have to use it between betwixt these thighs. These mm-hmm. Because let me tell you, they put up a lot of heat. I could start a campfire. That undercarriage we get to. to get to get, <laughs> get to heating up. Yeah, then you can the horses. You can hear if you ain't got on Lumi. So Lumi is a whole body deodorant. It's the first of its kind. Safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, armpits, thigh folds, <clears throat> belly button, butt crack, vulvas. And feet created by OBGYN who uh, saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant. Aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free pH balance for safe use below the belt. Lumi Starter Pack is a per- is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. It's a special offer for listeners. New customers get $5 off a Lumi Starter Pack with code SK S-K. at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your Lumi Starter Pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code SK. 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 I'm going to tell you about one more thing that's got me excited, and that is Factor. <laughs> With the busy fall season already in full swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam packed days. Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit, can help. You fuel up fast with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy this fall to cook and want to make sure you're eating well with factors. Skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping and prepping and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Level up with gourmet. Looking for calorie conscious options during a busy season? Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals uh, with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Um, now, let me tell y'all, me and Marcus, okay, we we trying to unbig our backs, <laughs> all right? And uh, with me traveling as much as I do um, because of just career stuff, I don't always have time to cook and we don't make great decisions when we order out. So factor has been factored into our life. It allows me to eat the way I actually want to eat, to be able to get the type of um, 
to have the type of lifestyle that I want to have, which is one that includes making healthy choices when it concerns eating. So uh, something else that we love about Factor is with Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions, source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices, and feature sustainable source seafood in their meals. This is September. Get Factor. Enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals. Enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes no prep no mess head to factor meals.com slash sk50 sk50 and use code sk50 sk50 to get 50 percent off that's code sk50 sk50 at factor meals.com slash sk50 sk50 to get 50 percent off yeah so boom second dna test Mom still rejecting the truth. Yeah. And a quick little side. Aunt Sandra is like to his mom. He just wants the truth. Angel, I, if, if there was an amount of money I could have paid to hear the truth, what is the, is it the truth is, is so bad that she can't say it? Is it she can't accept it? Because she knows based on the next interaction with Kirk, he's like, if you can't give me this, I'm not giving you no hug, no sugar, no joke. No part of me, like I'm you. You cut off fully. You're cut off. Yeah. And she, her response basically is like, I, I, I don't want to lose you again, but I can't. So what? He gave her so many outs, and I just like it. Maybe she protected Mr. Rick. What is it? Because you know, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, you know, this is. I was infuriated the entire time I watched it. I was so annoyed, so agitated. And I, you know, watching and you just like, girl, I mean, the truth is already here, right? That's what you're thinking. The truth is here. The science then said what it didn't say. It. There's really nothing you can say that's going to make anybody believe that this is not this man's father. There's nothing you can say, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I feel as though truly there is something that, I don't understand because I wasn't raised during the same time as these women that were referring to Kirk's, you know, mom and aunt and other women like them that there is some sort of concept that they feel as though they have to hold to that. <clears throat> if that is not real, then so many other things for them aren't real. Yeah. Like, cause to the, us, we're like, just stop fucking lying. Like it's real easy. Just say yup. Cause like the jig is up. You know what Even I'm saying? Her sister was like, he just wants to know the truth. That's when I, I saw the real side of her at least. Yeah. Because she had this front of like, I'm going to be the tough uh, auntie mm -hmm. regardless and, mm -hmm. and back my sister up. But at that point was the point where she was just like, just. This is your chance to at least not necessarily make good of everything. Just say yes. At least that's to your provide dad. an opportunity to move forward. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That that block is not just. I feel like that block is not just ego. That block is not just uh, self righteousness. It is something else that I feel like unless you were raised in the time of day that these women were raised, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it's not tangible for us because it makes no. It literally makes no sense to anyone else you know what i'm yeah. saying so i'm like as i was sitting there mad i was like what have you gone through and what have you been taught meaning his mother that makes you not be able to see the truth and handle it what falls apart for you when you acknowledge the truth i i was wondering the same thing because it's like it wasn't like she it wasn't like he later said i won't we won't have any contact like that was an ultimatum in the truest sense of the word and everything up until that point let you believe that he's not going to back down off mm -hmm. of this, right? And she was still like, no. And my thing was, so w moving a little bit to Mr. Rick, he's like, <clears throat> they, obviously they were very young. Cause yeah, Mr. Rick- saying, I was a kid. Yeah, like, and I mean probably, I would venture to say they probably were both less than 18, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe even around maybe, 16. I would think younger than that. Younger than 16? Yes. Dang. Because you got to understand, people yeah. were having kids at 16 back in the day, day. 53 years ago, for sure. Yeah, they were having kids that young. I'm thinking 13. 13, 14? Yeah. 
So that makes especially if you don't even remember the conversations around the time of when she got pregnant. Yeah, well, that's the thing that was messing me up. It was like based on the the conversation he was saying, he was like, "This is a small town. Everybody knew everybody, right?" So I'm like, if you dated her, fooled around, had a little sex, little peen, and she got pregnant. You wouldn't know that she's at least pregnant and around the time. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why it it's like okay, what does dated mean in the context, right. of what he said? Well, obviously we know what it included, oh, right? But but is it just that? Is that what they called it? If you stuck your penis in someone, we dated. Mm, that's or, true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. uh him not being aware, especially if he was, as he calls it, a kid, which I'm believing him in that he was a kid. I can believe that, like, the the consequence behind the action of having sex with another teenager is not something that you even link to your actions. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, uh, so I can believe that as he grew up as an adult – to become an adult. He never even went back to that memory of, I had sex with another young person. That resulted in a pregnancy. Yes. Yes. Because the crazy thing is, it don't look like they ever moved from this area. The man been living basically around, around the corner the from corner. the studio. And the crib was nice. Nah, he First was dressed all, nice and everything. I said, that well, house went, when you open that door, that house went up. Yeah. That, that was a home alone house. I mean, Kirk's, I mean, having seen him, Kurt's bodyguard's a big guy, and he that that house still look. <laughs> that also made me want to move to Texas. When you go to L.A., the house that be that house would be eighteen million dollars. Oh, absolutely. He uh, that pissed me off even more. When Did the I, house is nice. That when I saw yeah. how nicely kept his father was and how nice the house was. That had some interior design again. touch on it. The lamps went like this. And he and he and Kirk was getting also. We were so invested. Kirk was cussing in that dock. Yeah, and I was just like, I mean, he was filtering himself a lot, though. Yeah, wrong. But, but one time he bleed, he was like, I get my beep kicked, and we was just like, I get it, Kirk. And we already heard the well, mixtape the first time. Say we already heard the tape. But just yes. like as a kid growing up a gospel artist, you never would have thought this would we would ever get to this the point. See, this that side he of, laid out back in twenty twenty one, if that no, a little ass here and there, don't do nothing. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, so we already know how you get down, Kirk. It's fine. <laughs> No, Neither seeing, here nor there. seeing how uh, nice his dad presented himself, how well spoken his dad presented himself, I got more and more angry. Mm. I was like, oh. I mean, the eye rolls and the neck turns <laughs> that I was doing during this whole thing. I was like, so this was sitting here this entire time and you didn't have access to it. First of all, Kurt showed up like a break dancer. <laughs> He had on that bandana tied to his head. He, and, he, I don't think I've seen him look more like an artist on camera. He, his <laughs> sleeves cut like, like, what's up? I was out here doing dope. That He looked like one of those after school specials, right? And then his Part dad is program. looking like Uncle Phil coming back from the tennis club, <laughs> from the yacht club. I know he just got finished golfing that morning. Bruh, had a great time <laughs> said, on the back nine. And grow, listen up, growing in abject poverty and Mr. Rick, if you get a house like that, you done some things, right? I know Kirkland was like, bro. I got so angry. I was like. And also, somebody in the Patreon said this. I can't claim this as an original thought. It was like, this man's son was Kirk Franklin. That never, you never looked at Kirk and was like, that could be my baby. I need no. more. I need part two. Deep dive, man. Because I'm like, how you don't know? And this is a man who obviously has some sort of, has done some emotional work and emotional intelligence because he was like, you are the most important person in this equation. Yeah. And I have enough love for you if you would like it, but I will allow you to move this at whatever speed you want to move it at. I said, okay, this is all making me very angry. I, <laughs> I was just I, I was so mad because it's like a little bit of the retribution is like with Kurt not know Kirk, excuse me, not knowing that his father was there this entire time. You kind of hope, well, you didn't miss out on anything because mm -hmm. he was a piece of crap, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you see, no, he wasn't. This, this man Apparently, is it looks like he was great. <laughs> it would have been amazing. 
he would have been a great time. Man. Like I so not not because misery loves company, but just so for him to feel like, you know what, I got everything I needed. I didn't need to have him. But then you see him and he's just He's baking biscuits, basically. I mean the man look it was like leave it to beaver. Like, was that part in black and white? Yeah, it was. Uh no. Were parts of it in black pic- and white? No, there was a picture that they took of them that was in oh, black and white. Oh, that's what I saw a picture. I but was it, just like, oh no, no. it was yeah. Duh. And let me tell you what, what what messed me up, this statement. Uh, and I don't want to get it wrong, but it was something along the lines of like Kirk's was like, I've only known me broken. Yeah. I don't even know who I am well. Yeah. yeah. I said I was like, Jesus Christ. Dog. And you 53 now. So I know it's gotta creep in your mind like. I don't have a full life with this man. I have had a full life of anger towards somebody who wasn't my father, yes, towards that's my mother not having a father. And now I have this man who who seems to be nice from the from the small interaction. And he was two blocks over this whole time. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes me so mad. I wanted for him, a part of me wanted for him to be able to be like, didn't need this? No way. Yeah. To hell with him. That's what I wanted. But instead, it's like all these wasted years what? in which I could have had you. That's what pissed me off. I was like, God dang it. Even when he was a kid, right? And he was talking about, man, I would just go outside and talk to God looking at the stars. I mean, Because he was always there. Dog. Like, I, I've i never felt so bad for a person. I was just like, he ended up dirt poor. And unfortunately, it reminded me of Bud Crawford's uh, story in the sense of like his mom never said she loved him, had the other kids beat him up, and that's what became made him become the vicious champion he is now. Mm-hmm. That pain, like Kirk might have been in multiverse Kirk. Who knows? Ricky's his father. Like this is a different life this man has. Listen, likely. I try not too hard to think about what I would have been like with a supportive father, because mm. then I'll get pissed off. Yes. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get pissed off. I'll be like, you know what? Nope. You are just great. You're just perfect the way. You want to hurt? <laughs> said, no. You know what? I'm good. You haven't seen your dad in nine years. Why would you? <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. You clear I know. Why are you rejecting my love as a friend? I love you back. <laughs> I love you back. I love Listen, you back. Listen, I'm going to tell you what I, what I felt, right? And, uh. Obviously, as consumers, we often put ourselves in the situation if it's substitution. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Substitution, as substitution, our good friend JG said. When I tell you, I was feeling like if my life didn't pan out the way it was, now, I've, I've shared so many emotions that Kirk yeah. shared. My 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 uh, real dad being like, I was scared. I abandoned you. I couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. His reasoning doesn't land on me as reasoning. Also, one, one, you don't have it when you're when you most need it. Yeah. Right. And I don't think I could even process it at that time. Yeah. But what you feel, even mm-hmm. though I had a stepfather who was great yeah. and basically gave me all the things that dad was, and he he came into my life at seven. Yeah. Knowing that that's not your biological father, still yeah. still wires you a certain way. Yeah. So his fear, abandonment lands as rejection absolutely unworthiness Mm -hmm. nobody wants you Mm -hmm. right like and so that has positive uh that turns positive for my sons right because i as a kid like seven eight i remember being like if i ever have kids i will they will never feel like this right so that that turns the hands of time for my own children right Mm because you're either destined to repeat or change behavior. I could have been like him, had kids and rejected them or flipped the script. And I think partly because I had a dad who stepped in, I'm like, oh, this is what this, this is what, you, this is this what, is what it's supposed to be kids. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure my kids have it. But at the okay. same time, that little piece of you, and I, 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 I felt this tremendously, that piece of you that feels unwanted and unworthy never goes away. It's in your heart. It's and in you, your oh, heart. Yeah. I'm sorry. You I would, are don't very you do it. worthy. No. And you're very loved. I promise. I don't need this from you. So <laughs> I was feeling don't like reject my I love. reject your love, Clithead. <laughs> so um, Kev on stage, the persona is p- 
partly due to like, okay, bet you don't want me. Everyone, millions of people will, will want me. me. I will raise up an army of people who love and adore me. And I don't think I am that person if I felt loved and adored. I'm like, oh, I feel wanted. Uh, that's why my kids probably won't go to the NBA because they don't have a dad to be angry at. You got to shoot those shots in the dark Do and you hate your dad. You're rationalizing that though. You, you would have still be an amazing person. No, I don't even. think so. You would have. No. Yes. I need that fire. I'm built on that That's fire only black people be thinking stuff like that, <laughs> that black we people. need that we need trauma to be great you could have well, been loved. i don't know what i could have been of because course we don't know of course we don't know what we could have been but you would have been i don't think so i, I think I, I probably would be working at Bo uh, boeing still no that the challenge, don't rationalize people treating you poorly i'm not rationalizing i'm just saying i think that's how i internalized that behavior i i turned that into Everyone will want me. People will cheer for me. You need to go to a doctor to have that looked out, and you should go to ZocDoc to find it. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor? Me and Marcus are currently. And you literally ask everyone you know for a recommendation. Well, you know, a doctor, you know, you want a doctor that gets you, that listens to you, that makes you feel super comfortable. And then you uh, search after weeks and weeks and weeks, and you find one, right? And it's just like, ah. Uh, they are so good. Not only do they do the thing that you need them to do, they're actually close by, right? They um, went to the school you went to, so you feel like there's going to be a connection there. So you call their office, you make an appointment, right? They have an appointment when you need the appointment, but then the receptionists tell you that this doctor that is perfect for you does not take your insurance. Like, What? Listen, don't don't cry, okay? You don't have to eat the ice cream and eat your feelings. All you got to do is head over to ZocDoc, find and book a doctor who's right for you, and take your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient review doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance and are located near you and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Let me tell you. We live in a very big city and my friends be going to doctors all the way over in Santa Monica. Guess where Angel ain't driving? Not, not to, get, old Santa Monica. Not right to get my transmission looked at. Absolutely not. I need somebody over here to look at this uterus. And this is why I love ZocDoc. Look at this uterus? Yeah, that's my transmission. Uh, this is why I love ZocDoc. I was able to find an OBGYN that was not far from me, that took my insurance and had really great reviews because, listen, I'm also not dealing with no jerks over here, not when you're dealing with my lady parts. Um, I loved it, and I think you'll love it too. These docs are all verified, have all verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 48 hours. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. Go to ZocDoc.com slash SK. SK. And download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash SK. SK. ZocDoc.com slash All right. Do you want to um, stay with Mr. Rick or do you want to continue on? This really whatever. Oh, I mean. Kirk's reconciliation with his son. Mm. Oh, that was the most dramatic thing I've ever seen. If I'm going to keep it 100. And I, I knew his son was a dramatic young man from the outfit. Mm. <laughs> The cowboy hat, the locks, the pants, the patchwork pants. I said, oh, we thought it was over. It's just beginning. Yeah. And Kurt was like, I have something to tell you. And he said, I don't know what it is, but it already hurts. And I said, this is right. He he knew this was a documentary and he showed up. <laughs> give, me, give me everything. Okay? Because yeah. we could have ended the documentary at, at the, the 25 minute no, mark. No, you need reconciliation in act three, baby. Yes, he got to bring it all home. That baby said, where is my makeup? He was ready. All right. <laughs> he been on Zeus. You think he ain't ready to Listen, camera on? Okay. Camera on. I see. Let's get it. Let's I get myself a clip. Let's go viral on the tick to the top. To the top, to the tick. And action. I don't know what it is, but it already hurts. <laughs> I said. Not you, put it. Your curls were delayed. 
I loved it. I loved his commitment to being like, you about to get all of me. I'm not filtering anything, Father. The fact that they hadn't talked in two years. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, which made me go back to thinking about Kurt. I said, oh, this baby. <laughs> I said, this baby ain't got nobody to talk to but Tammy. I said. <laughs> Kurt. Yes. Yeah. I said, you ain't talked to your mama in 20 years. You didn't even know who the hell your daddy was. And you ain't talked to your son in two years. I wanted to hug Kurt at that time and be like, baby, we just. What's Kurt? I keep calling him Kurt because <laughs> you, I'm old. You're Kurt. Shannon Sharp. Now, Skip. Dang it. <laughs> you keep calling Stephen A. Skip. Kirk. Kirk. I wanted to. Be like, would well, you just need to take some time off? Man, because this is a lot. And all he said, I got the album, I got to do the work. I know you got all this mess over here. And then his son, like his father, I mean, just wept. He said, This is all I've ever needed. And he touched his face, and I said, Oh, did that, that, that just take and Isaiah down? came in the car? He was like, You good? I was like, Yeah, man, what's up? <laughs> I hugged him tight and kissed his neck. Oh yeah, I uh, I'm glad that they're working on whatever they're working on because I know that that's probably a tough little Man. tough situation because that's his oldest or no? I believe it's his oldest son. I'm not sure the uh -huh. the range, but yeah, no, I, I believe it was though. No, because I think Kirk said he would he had he had a kid when he was a kid, and he was carrying him around and while he was how young. Old is his son. It is his oldest. It is his oldest for sure. He oh. was uh Okay, was so the, um, yeah, that okay, so his son is thirty five. Oh wow. So or thirty three. He's thirty five, so he was Kirk was what, eighteen? Yeah. When he had him? Yeah. Yeah. So no telling what parenting mistakes Kirk was making when he was younger. Mm -hmm. And Kirk has talked about like he was a jerk. Yeah. When he was young, he got all that money, he didn't know what to do. He was also broke and poor. And broken. Yeah. Like, listen, that baby, that, them folks have been through some things. Yeah. And we was just listening to the music. Yeah. So, <laughs> we was I just, to say, stop. Yeah, we didn't know say, none of this stuff was going on. We just, <laughs> I promise, the stop. The whole the, stop. The, nothing mm, but mm, stomp. Mm, it, it ain't, ain't over. over. I was like, dang, man, we didn't know. No, like, I, I didn't know. I didn't ever delve into the back history of Kirk Franklin. I just yeah. liked his music. So I did not know this man was adopted until I pressed play on this documentary. What? I wanted his music. You was a Doja Cat fan? <laughs> I don't you know mean? nothing about none of that. Your boyfriend or nothing. I know when you make music, I play press play. I don't Come care about nothing about nothing I else. I found out the name of his wife two years ago. I knew nothing about Kirk Franklin, but his music. That was in the that was in the music. That whole story. No, that was a little snippet of skip to you the skip song. The intro. Heck yeah, give me the song. You was trying to get to Brighter Day and Hosanna too There's quick. Gonna be a day, <laughs> you was getting to Brighter Day. day. He Friday only had Brighter Day because he had the darkness at the, at the intro. It don't look like he had no Brighter Days. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you, based off all this, it's been a really dark. <laughs> it's been really dark for Kirk. Listen, I want to offer the grace he offered to his mom. I, I, Do it, I, man. Call it, man. Let's get an exclusive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he offered his mom so much grace. Absolutely. I, I was. He offered him her her so much grace. I, and... And kept the boundary at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He didn't disparage her or anything, but at the same, and I thought that was a good example of like, I ain't got, like a uh, sister's mama said, a uh, sister's grandma said, you ain't got to treat me wrong. You ain't got to like me, but you ain't going to treat me wrong. Like, I, you can't give me what I need for this relationship to heal and remain whole and, and build until healthy. Mm -hmm. Until you can accept this, I can't accept you. Because like you said, even I think the grace comes from at the end of the day, we all want the the dream. Mm -hmm. We all want a mother and a father that loves us and pours into us. Yeah. Even even you with having an amazing dad in the household. Yeah. It's not as if you would have been upset or rejected having an additional father, your biological father also pouring into you and, yeah and then looking at him and and being like and, when i went down to alabama and he turned around how he had that same stomach i had i said i'm <laughs> i'm fighting 
I don't care what these trainers say. I am fighting genetics. Yeah, that man built from back from the back. Looking, he was he was facing the door when I walked up on him. Oh, amazing, good shape. He turned around. (laughs) I said, said, "Oh my god!" You said, "I give up." I said, "Oh my!" I am fighting against fight. I'm hoping against hope. Mm -hmm. That man built just. Like me, no. I, I showed you the picture. Yeah, you did. I said, boy, I might show the picture in the Patreon. Listen, I might not put it out in the world. I probably won't, but I put it in the Patreon. Y'all folks gonna be like, God, dog. L- let me tell you, I, I I understand. And as much as I am a pull the pin out the grenade and blow us all up, <laughs> even I have a soft spot for wanting to know what that feels like of of having a um healthy even if the relationship doesn't look the way it should look based off of yeah. if two people came together in love and made a child uh i would prefer a healthy trying to work towards a healthy relationship mm-hmm. than to not have one at all and that is why i think he offered the grace yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want. I don't care. It doesn't matter how much the anger supersedes everything. Yeah. Underneath there is the need that's not being fulfilled. For sure. For sure. Now, I'm so sorry that you don't want, that you don't feel rejected, that that's still there in there. Don't go back to my life. I want to dig it out. I want to dig in your life. I want to dig why, it out. Where's that anger? Anger is just the surface feeling. I What's know exactly behind that why anger? I'm angry. You know why I'm angry. All right, we'll talk to you. <laughs> talk about it right now and cry. Talk about it right now and cry. I talked to my Patreon about it years ago. Well, talk to this Patreon about it. Nope. <laughs> look, at, look at how easy that is. <laughs> Look at that boundary. You rolled up the window on me. Uh-huh. All right, moving on. <laughs> we came in early so we could talk about this and still get to a topic or two. Uh, Todd of the Perry done upset the gram. <laughs> now, when I first saw this clip, the first day it was posted, and also shout out to uh, uh, Christina Grayson. Uh, she ain't the person, but she said the next thing, but I deleted the person by mistake. Mm. But when I saw this clip about Tyler Perry talking about black women dating, and I, I, the moment I saw it, the first day, within an hour of it coming, I saw it on Twitter. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> this is going to be the doggone discussion for at least uh-huh. five days. Mm-hmm. And before, as soon as he said, I'm probably going to get in trouble when I say this, I said. No, you oh, said it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it brother, don't say it. this guy stinks. <laughs> It's just this is so, on the the podcast with the girl, the show with the girl. I don't know who he was talking to. With the girl from the uh, Zatima. I don't know. Okay, we'll go in here. I don't know. I don't know if it went to her. But uh, here's the thing. Here, here's the the clip. Play it, play it. Might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. Listen, a, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now, mm-hmm. b- black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men, right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm-hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm-hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can mm-hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. That is okay. Mm-hmm. That's not somebody who's beneath you. Yeah. That's somebody who came to love you at your worth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. You can have a light bill. Baby, you can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm-hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard mm-hmm. for a lot of people to take in because that means, mm-hmm. no, no, no. I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh, keep, but go on, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who, whose men can't touch what they make. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Listen, He's a good man, Savannah. He's a good man. A well, good man. So As a resident black mad. woman, I would love to hear your thoughts. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. 
I, I think people are confused. It is the truth. I'm going to name some people that I see in great marriages. And it wasn't like it started off that this is the only thing I'll say. It wasn't like it started off that way, but that mm-hmm. is the way it has become. And if we go by the standards of if the man ain't making more, then their marriages should be done. We go to our good dear friend, Tabitha Brown. Yeah. Who was able to help retire her husband. Okay. And that's not to say that chance is not adding to the household fund yeah. of money, but Tabitha is Tabitha's <laughs> brand is a multi-million dollar brand. You, I don't know of any police officers that make multi-million the corrupt dollars. ones <laughs> the corrupt ones be cashing out eventually they usually get caught but a lot of times they don't but you probably got to be corrupt ain't no ain't the, straight up you ain't gonna get the it the ceiling to the ceiling of making money in the legitimate way as a police officer is only so high yes as an influencer and as a uh um mogul in the different businesses there is a uh, a ceiling that we don't even know where that is but it's definitely higher than a police officer yeah my current marriage at one point in time marcus was the breadwinner soon as i started making real tv money i'm sorry the one and the actress can get paid at the top and i wasn't nowhere near the top because there was sometimes i was at the bottom is not going to compare to what uh he's not going to be able to hit that as a um as a building engineer, what I was able to hit in the amount of time. And now as a, we work together full time because of the weight that my name has, I'm always going to be at least in this season pulling in bigger checks. Mm-hmm. And if I, and if but you, 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 you did two people that Tyler ain't saying though. What you talking about? He did two. People. You did two. Marcus was the breadwinner at first. And so was chance. No, no, no. I was the breadwinner. Right. No, first. you said first Marcus was the breadwinner, and then the you became an actor. And then it we flipped. No, no, no. When we got married, I was I started. He proposed, and I booked ER the same weekend. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I was the breadwinner. I was no longer the breadwinner. So it let flipped. me. But but what Tyler is saying, and this is what I'm curious about. Uh-huh, go ahead. If you are you now, right? I'm taking a good a good man over money. And then, but but you let me let me rephrase this. Uh huh. Do you you meet them? You meet uh, let me see where back to a couple podcast episodes. I'm saying yes to what Tyler's saying. I would take a good man over money. That he could just pay the light bill. Yes. Would Would you feel like you're settling? No. Why not? Because I know what it takes for a good relationship to work, and it is not the actual amount of money Mm. that is being made. People argue over money not because of, not necessarily because of, like, the amount of money. It's when you are making a certain amount of money, but you are not giving into the household the way you're supposed to. Or you're taking from the household as if you're putting in a certain amount. Mm -hmm. I will take any day. You know why? Because a lot of these rich niggas is foul. There's a girl I follow on Twitter who was like, mm-hmm. somebody was like, uh, why y'all don't, why you don't date these rich people? And she was like, because they are terrible people. They are terrible. Did you see Diver Mad Black Woman? They are. They, Bald head. Uh, what is it? Steve Harris. Is that his name? I the don't actor. remember. Yeah, I don't remember. It was name, mean to Kimberly, was Kimberly mean. Lee's. That's he why she pushed mean. her in that bathtub. Listen, he was mean. I know this makes me a bad person, but when she was being mean to him in the movie, it was my favorite part. When she pushed him in the bathtub, I was like. <laughs> now, the, now, mind you, this is the thing I'll say. If I were a teacher. Maybe I would say differently. If I was in a career where the cap was lower, mm-hmm. then maybe I'm going to want somebody that at least meets me. I'm not going to expect that in the career that I'm in now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to expect that. If I am like the VP of some national company, Yeah. right? I am not going to, to make my pool of eligible men that small because the cap of what I make is so high. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. So if I had a regular job, a regular nine to five or a regular salary job where I'm only making at the most, at the most 125, maybe 150. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe then meet me where I'm at. Yeah. But when you get women that are making the first, they, they make a six figures, but the first figure ain't uh one, one. two, three, four, five. <laughs> they at six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> A lot of women were Oregon rejecting this. I ain't going to say. He said this in the clip. He was like, if you want to do that, then keep your list and go on. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. No, you. By the time he got to that point, a large majority, very few people I would say that I seen on the timeline was having the same reaction you was ha- having. And even as I look at the Patreon comments, uh, a lot of people are like, "I why we got to settle is the I don't think it's settling. is the thing you don't. What don't. do you think it is? I don't. I don't think it's settling at all. Uh, it. And here's the thing. I'm not saying date a broke man. You can pay the light bill and take you out to dinner sometimes. I'm not saying date a broke man. And Tyler Perry was being very extra with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. wait a minute, the light bill out here. You can pay the light bill out here. Man. Actually, he's doing really well. Light bill crazy. It's light bill stupid. Crazy. Light bill it's is, only going up right now. We had to pay our light bill uh bi weekly just so when it came for real, it wasn't yes. as big as it could be <laughs> when we moved to LA. He's being I'm not saying date a man that has no ambitions mm-hmm. that has no that has no job and is not um uh and is not actually living up to a purpose that is something that you can be proud of yeah <clears throat> i think people are equating what someone's yearly salary is automatically to the character of the person yeah and yeah. the character is what really matters to me so if i did find a dude that like in this like world where I don't have kids and I'm not with my current husband. If it was a guy, me being an influencer in a, a rapturous, right? Yep. And I met a dude, let's say, uh, who drove the city bus. Remember that podcast episode? Would you date the bus driver? I would have a hard time finding him to begin with. I've never been on a city bus in Los Angeles. Yeah. So let me, I'm trying to put me in a situation where uh, it would okay. actually happen. Okay. So maybe he, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's, uh, uh, in the crew, right? Maybe he's a second AD. We smashing. <laughs> We're together. If he is working hard and like he's respected in his career and craft, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> First of all, you can help me make my content, boo. We building together. Thanks. We are building together. How many popping YouTubers there are because uh, they're like power couples in content All creation? All of the white women I knew they that were blowing up, it was because their husbands knew how to shoot. Yeah. And I said, this nigga's off here being a good man, working uh, as a building engineer. Electrical, electrical <laughs> dudes. Right. So, yeah, no. Uh, while, while I wouldn't more than likely come in contact mm-hmm. and have enough time to spin around a, a, a man that was driving a bus, so I'm not going to put that. That just be, doesn't be make for sense. Real, be yeah. realistic. Realistically, I could date someone who's on a set working. Would I date a, a PA necessarily? No, because oh that, now PA's beneath. Let you. me tell you why. Because that means more than likely you just now started in your career. Okay, what if he's best boy grip, but he's not key. It depends on how old he is. There be some people that really just like PA too, though, that have been doing He's that. He's gonna for have a while. to tell me he does something else as well. That makes sense because you know that cat. Uh, <laughs> right, I and, know the right. cat, and I just if you're just now PAing, then that lets me know either you're doing a random career shift or you ain't been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like wait we could ask to do something else right you, you ain't paying attention so that does not department? necessarily have to do with his job that has to do with what have you been doing but if he's yeah if he working on set yeah 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 absolutely yeah but no if you a 40 year old PA you gonna have to talk to me you gonna have to tell me what happened <laughs> You can't tell me you've been working in this industry for 20 years and you only had a PA. Let me tell you what I, now this is not something I knew. I was reading a lot of this this course on here and I thought this was very interesting. One woman said that the biggest danger to a uh, a relationship where the, where the finances are so different is, uh, Tyler said if the man s- loves you and is secure in it, in the relationship and p- chips in, right? Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Well, she said what often happens, because she's a high earner, what often happens, she says that the men she dates who don't make as much as her end up um, internalizing that Mm -hmm. and resenting her and then treating her poorly because they're not where they want to be in life. So instead of being cool with their relationship or cool with their money, they end up being, oh, she thinks she's better than me. Whatever the case is, is what she was saying. I was like, oh, that's very interesting. Mm. Because I, in my relationship, Melissa... Is breadwinner just makes the most money or is it like, what does that imply that it's, it's a chasm or it just makes the most? I think it's the most money. Okay. So Melissa was the breadwinner 
she won all the bread, probably for the first, <laughs> <laughs> shoot, we've been here 19 years. I probably start winning some bread in year 12. Mm-hmm. She got the first real job mm-hmm. at the bank. I was working in the daycare. She was in the management training program. I was just a personal banker mm-hmm. at Boeing. She made more than I did. When I moved to all here and I was chasing my dream, she was working a real job. Yeah. When I got to all deaf, I think I might have made what she, no, I still was under her by like five grand. But then I started doing comedy. So it wasn't until the Real Comedian social media tour that I started uh, equaling her and making more than her, like for touring. But technically, you can't even give me all the credit for that because she was on the tour with me and the Love Hour was the reason people paid $50 for the ticket is because we did the love hour yeah. first. So it wasn't like I was, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. doing it without her. So the, the, when we started generating money, she was a part of that. But I say all that to say, I was never tripping because I needed the help. I never come, kept, I didn't come into it like that because yeah. I was living in a little baby apartment with her. I got a little bit better apartment, but I can imagine that. Uh, I mean, look, it's somebody experience. I'm sure there's women who've met, you know, you date or be around who you date. But what I thought was interesting is most people was not, they, they took what he said as settling and majority of people were saying they wouldn't do it at all under any, comp- and, and, and then another thing I saw a lot of is like, why black women always got to sell, settle. Why we can't date nobody that makes as much then money. Date as them. A- <laughs> That's really what it boils down to. Then date them. <laughs> you sound like uh, black China. I'm gonna rock your world. Then rock it. <laughs> <laughs> then date them. Like, Date them. Nobody's saying go run after the bus driver. We're saying mm. if that is what you're being presented, if that is what the environment is in what you are being presented with, don't shoot them down just because. Again, I'm all about looking at a man's work ethic. I'm looking at how he is respected in his industry, in his ambition. Yeah, he got that ambition, baby. Look if at his he eyes. got if he got the ambition and he is actually like working in and it looks like he's working toward whatever he wants, or if he's in his career and he's at the cap of whatever his career yep. is, as long as it's like something respectable, I'm Gucci with it. And it doesn't really have anything. That's been my mindset since I was in my twenties. Somebody this. said that it was a blind stop blind spot because we were in their forties. I always knew I was gonna be an actress. Yeah. So I knew eventually I would make some money. I was yep. not gonna be Broke girl angel forever. Broke girl angel. Listen, I want you to ask me that question. I'm going to answer as if I was Tyler Perry, but I'm Kevin on stage. What I would have said. Would you? What's the question? Like, uh, I don't even know. Oh, what dating advice do you have for for, for black women? Here's what here's what I want to say. And I might got in trouble for this. Uh, I've been married for 20 years. I don't know. Best of luck to you all. I don't know. I, I I can't help you. I have no say so on the matter. Well, see, he ain't married. That's why he I talking. Know, but I'm gonna tell you what I say, though. I'm not finna step into that. I'll step into some other crap. But for this, he's also in his own ballpark because it's gonna be highly unlikely that he finds somebody that he has to have this conversation with of like that he dates. I, I mean. uh in terms of like, I, I feel like most people that he's, he's going to be dating are not making as much money as him. Yeah, absolutely. But I think not. the dynamics of our of our society deem that okay. Yeah, he is not looking more than likely at whoever he's dating annual salary. No, he's not. Stedman, we need to talk to Stedman on this. We need to talk he to even, Oprah. Stedman ain't even married. No, Stedman is the one who be quiet. He ain't making the money. He putting something on the live Right, bill. But Oprah, what? Oprah seemed happy with Stedman. That's, That's what I'm saying. It's because he don't sit in front of the camera. I would. What's a camera? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> he is. Did y'all see Oprah laying on the beach with the thing to it in Hawaii? That's I seen it with Anna up. Douglas uh, cover up video. I said, "This Oprah is funny." Oprah had the thing out. Oprah was look at Anna Douglas page. Oprah had the thing to it. Chewed it out. I Come said, "Miss Winfrey, Miss Winfrey." Why you got that thing tuned on the beach? Yes, Stedman does Stedman make money, money, but Stedman is not a billionaire. It's not that is Oprah. What I know. Stop it. Y'all know what we're Stedman, talking about. Come on, y'all. Let's be for real. Now, Stedman putting okay, something on the line. Okay, wait a minute. He's a, okay, now this is where I'm saying y'all being hypocrites. Stedman, yes, he is probably a millionaire. And this is what we're referring to the difference. She's a That's, billionaire. Have y'all seen the videos of how much rice a billion is to a million? Yes. But listen, <laughs> she's a billionaire. He's a millionaire. You That's the all, bus driver of their you relationship. You all are 100 <laughs> uh, nares, 100 uh, nares uh, uh, or, or somewhere close, and y'all get mad at other 
uh, like tensioners. It's the same difference, is what we're saying. Tensioners. It's the same. Is all I'm saying. Yes. They say it's not the same. Listen. Stabman ain't married, you, though. It's a blind spot for y'all because y'all ain't been around. <laughs> y'all like, uh-uh, a million is a million. So that tell me something. I'm just saying. In Oprah Circle, a millionaire is probably broke. You're I'm like, not pulling out 100%. my pocket. Look at Stabman. What's he got, a million? <laughs> Nerd. It costs more to upkeep my plane every year. God, I man. If oh I'm God. around uh, Oprah, I'm not pulling out my wallet to pay for that. For what? No, I assumed that you were paying. Yep. Do y'all remember when uh, Oprah and The Rock was like, donate money to Maui? <laughs> and people were, like, were like, nigga, you donate money to Maui. Rock and Oprah. <laughs> We've got a great island. plan. Get in your wallets and give money. Listen, when you're that rich, you can't ask for nothing. All you should be telling people is how much you gave. Don't <laughs> link in my bio to the rest. I can't ask y'all for nothing. Here, I gave five million. He gave five billion. Y'all not finna be like we raise. We raising what? Y'all together can can do that right now. <laughs> Them folks was like, boy, if y'all don't shut up, we ain't trying to hear this stuff. No, we ain't. We are not. We are not. Oh, uh, so we sound God. crazy. The ratios are the same. The dollar amount. The dollar amount is still like in, in the perception of a billion dollars to one million dollars. That ratio is not the same as a uh, billion is what uh, a million millions. It's a thousand a thousand millions, a thousand millions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a thousand millions. Listen, I agree that with that Tyler saying can only put on the light bill is an extreme, but I feel like he was trying to be extreme. I'm not saying that. I am saying, because that's what y'all stuck on, is if he can only put on a light bill. I think the purpose of what he was saying was, if you get too caught up in a man not being able to make as much as or more than you, especially if you are very successful in the money that's in your account is also showing how successful you Both are. like, no, I, you really say I'm the light bill? I ain't being for real about the light bill? People are really stuck on that. <laughs> That if he is not put a light bulb emoji, he was, he right. was tongue in cheek on the light bill. People was like, "That's it." There were so many other bills than the light bill. But if he is, if he's not now, I understand now. If you are someone that is living a very luxurious life, because there are people who make a lot of money that aren't about the luxuries of like I'm going to fly on a private jet, yada yada yada. I can understand you being mm -hmm. like, hell no. But there yeah. are people who make a lot of money that live in their homes mm -hmm. and they just want to be happy like yeah. Josh. And just, <laughs> he just has a self-driving car and right. Right. solar panels. Right. Josh. I, I mean, I wish I had a luxury car that is kept in the garage. You know, I got rid of Maserati. When? Last night. <laughs> he's, like, you're not. he's like, I'm really? gonna get rid of it before not. any more jokes get out before we talk not. about this. They came and took it back. They picked it up. They it this wow. gone, man. Wow. Uh, they, Angel, they pick up. Hush, hush. The body gone. This, I'll pick up truck they call McGee. that repo, but I don't think that's what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I sold it. <laughs> oh, she made a little cash on it. I ain't gonna hold you. Oh, she did. Kevin, everything. You just God is good, man. Money. I made a like this. Money. <laughs> but oh, the Maserati is gone. I drive a pickup truck. I know what it's like to be with the man. I got an F-150 Ranger. I don't know nothing about no luxury car. Yes. I got an F-150 Ranger that paid off. Yeah. It take regular gas. It take regular Me, a man's man. Ford. Ugh. Trucks. Trucks. Hammers and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Marcus' video last night. He saw the light in that garage. I got to cook that. I got the pond. I got to chlorine that. I got the hot tub. I got to do that. I said, whoo, don't tack me up. That, <laughs> <laughs> you crazy about doing all that manual labor? Oh, yeah. No, Marcus will see stuff, and then that'd be the weekend plans. I'd be like, so what you doing this weekend? Well, the AC, I heard it whistling. So what I did is I ordered some stuff, and I'm going to go in there, figure that out. Does HVAC Toms, the air is tripping. <laughs> I'm free Saturday morning around 11. I'm going to be watching the Colorado game. No, Marcus is Bring quick. Door. For what? that, I, the the uh, AC used to blow on me too hard on the longer couch, which would always make me go to sleep. And I'd be like, it's just, <laughs> "I'm gonna fix that right now. Uh, keep your butt awake." <laughs> he got a little the little shield, put it up there. He said, "Is it blowing on you now?" I said, "You ordered that." He said, "Yeah." I said, "It's not." He's like, "All right." I wish I could get Melissa with manly stuff like that. <laughs> Like, oh, let me just now. What I do, and I ain't gonna hold y'all. I be Mr. Marcus. I go not the. No. I go uh, every three, <laughs> every three months. 
uh, in, in our AC system, you got to change the filter. Oh, you do? If you don't change the filter, then the AC don't blow cold. So my family be like, AC ain't blowing cold. I said, oh, man. Man stuff. Listen. And I, I throw that away. I got a whole little couple of filters in my thing. I go and do I join the military on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if it's something broken in that house and Marcus can fix it, Marcus gonna fix it. That's just is what it is. Technically, I'm fixing it by paying for it to be fixed. Hey, no, I get it. It's all relative. All right, moving on. I really want to talk about this. Christina Grayson put this in. Cardi B and Offset versus Nicki Minaj and that oomph she be with. If you're unfamiliar. Oh, can't wait to tell you the T.I. Kenneth Petty is Nicki Minaj's husband and kinsman redeemer. Apparently, him and Offset was beefing unbeknownst to me right so kenneth petty and two other gentlemen who are in their mid 40s to early 50s i'd imagine mm -hmm. are in new york on the side of the street corner Where you be yelling at their phone this, essentially this was them. <laughs> on the street corner like yeah <laughs> All we heard you talking noise you would, yeah, we heard you talking noise. Come see about us. We'll find you. Yeah. Or we gonna pull up on you. Where you at? We can get there. We pull up on you on vacation at the timeshare. Yeah, at the timeshare. Where you stay in the Windsor Hotel? We'll see you there. Yeah, pan, pan the camera. Show the daycare next street. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? So, so the next day, so the next day, Offset gets off his private plane. He was like, "Y'all niggas sound broke." <laughs> he said, "Y'all goofy." Talk about where I am. This is where I'm I going am. to the Colorado game. Yeah. Where are you on the? Go home. You remember Street Fighter when when guy would beat you and your face be all messed up? He'd be like, "Go home and be a family man." That's what Offset told them. Making out with Coach Prime, man. Well, I'm, I'm at the game. I was playing video games and I was getting sturdy with Kai and I. Also, somebody on Twitter said sturdy is just voguing for straight dudes. And when I watched that video with Offset and them, I was like. <laughs> Points were made. Here we go. He literally had a sleepover, bought his bag, dropped it on the ground with Kai Sana, who was one of the biggest streamer boys. Mm -hmm. And they played video games. They was having a, a grand old time. And grown men were yelling at their phones in the <laughs> middle of the night. Aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> like, at the end, you got to be like. I don't think they know embarrassment like that. Let, let, okay. Post. That'll show him. <laughs> Let me tell you this little thing. Give it to thing. us, Angel. So, you know, my son, I, I'm going to put everything out there like that. My son, no, I knew who Kai I was. And that wasn't a booty tape moment. I finally knew. You've been knew. talking about Kai And also, his name is Kai, so I'm going to know who he is because that's my baby's name. My son go to this school. He was like a friend invited him over. And I said, okay, we'll see if your dad can take you. And I said, where is it? He tells us where it is. I know the name of this community. So I said, oh, you going? Because I want to see the houses in this. I <laughs> I'll, see. I'll drop you off. Listen, I said, we got to see. We take them. Um, um, Marcus takes them. Um, um, my, uh, me and Marcus talk on the phone. He's like, Angel, these houses are ridiculous. He's like, this is this is where the Lord's trying to take <laughs> us, right? I said, I agree, touch and agree. Hey. So I go to pick up little Marcus, and I'm now driving through this community, and I'm like, my God, today, huh? Amen, mm -hmm. amen. So I walk up in the house um, and talking to the mom. And I was just like, oh, it's so peaceful here. Da, 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 da. It's like other people just walking the street. She's like, yeah. She's telling me this one little story. And then she was like, well, you know, <sighs> Nicki Minaj lives next door. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. She was like, I see. <laughs> I don't. Nicole miss, Minaj? I don't know Miss her, but I do see her husband. <gasps> and uh, she was like, I wave. He doesn't acknowledge me, but I always wave. <laughs> I said, and I said, oh, yeah, I know who he is. He was just in all the blogs today. What? This, literally the same morning that everybody was seeing this, where you at? Is the same morning. She was no like, way. I was like. She seen him that morning? Oh, no, he no, was no, in no, New York. No, 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 no. Got it, got it, got it. The go. same morning that I see, I would have known who this man was. I didn't even got know Nikki it. was married. But the Cut. same morning that I see the video, I go over to this woman's house. She was like, he lived next door. 
And I was like, what? I said, is, this is the type of neighborhood I'm in. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. Really? Yes. She was like, oh, I can't afford that house. But you can afford to live next door to it is what I wanted to oh, say. Now, come on. Let's be for real. <laughs> you like, are, you're in the neighborhood, literally in, in the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. You somewhere around it. We were close, actually. Go yeah. over their house and, and knock on the door and say you're selling Girl Scout cookies. And listen, and you ain't got knew, no daughters. Don't worry about where I got the cookies from. Where Nikki at? And she knew his rap. She was like, listen, and I love, I, I'll give people a second chance. And she knew the rap sheet. She was like, I know this and this and that. But as long as you haven't done anything to me, you get us. So I speak. I said, look at you. You're that's just so a, friendly. That's crazy. I was like, ah, this <laughs> is wild. This Somebody is Pedro right. says she need to lock her doors tight. Listen, I got to tell you other tea that she told me. Oh yeah, yeah. Once we get off, <laughs> oh, absolutely. But listen, I, I, I would be. This was a, a topic on the Twitter timeline when this happened. What's the age for street stuff? Um, like really, at what age are you really like pull up? Let's fight right now. Well, I think the age. If you get a degree. You gotta. You can't. So you know, if you end up completing your degree at twenty two. Sorry, you're out of the street game stuff, right? right? If you decide to forego college, because for whatever reason, you decide I'm just going to enter into the workforce mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, once you hit about 25, I agree with this comment. Prefrontal by cortex Josie. developed. Yeah, you the street games are over. They yeah. are far too old. Wonderful. And the thing is, like, because we are not the target and we're just watching it, you know how silly you look? Trying to be tough to be like, yeah, man, y'all on that. <laughs> we ain't on that type of time. <laughs> the lights can do with with uh, Kenneth Petty. We ain't on that type of time. You think this is a vacation? You, all y'all do is play. We don't play. You we, you think this is the guy? I, Are you being for real right now? This is what I always think it's weird when the threats are videoed and uploaded. That feels it takes away all the power when you're like, yeah, roll up on you, then nigga. Okay, post. <laughs> what is the caption? What's Hold a up? good What's we, a good caption we, for this? We outside. Hashtag. We out. Should we do three eyes on outside? Some. We outside. Put the fist emoji because I think that'll really fist and fire. Maybe I would say put the gun, but it's green, so it don't really. It looks more like a water gun. So maybe the shit emoji, the doo doo. <laughs> That right there, <laughs> soon as you have to do anything yes. to post it, it takes to me away the the thug likeness of it. Yes. The whole thing about thugs, we don't do internet stuff. But you being on the internet, like I ain't about that internet stuff. I'm in the streets for real. That you can't have it you can't have it both ways. Because you're if doing you're really it. Really about the, the street stuff, then you're not you shouldn't be you should be on a burner. But like my thing is, okay, what if something happens to offset? You don't think that the investigative forces are going to be like, well, here's well, people. A lot of times people who've been in prison don't don't care about going back to prison. It's sure. unfortunate. That's what's un, un, uh, fortunate for that. But yeah, it was it was just like one. It came out of nowhere. Yeah. At least for me, I was like, what? What am I Everybody watching? seemed to know all the backstory. I was like, what is it he? Was, I think it was a song in, uh, a lyric in one of Cardi's songs that. Uh, the new one, Bongos? I don't know if it's in bongos, but I really like, I feel like somebody was able to quote the lyric and it seemed like she was taking a shot at the husband. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Hey, Tron, what y'all say? What happened? It's just. Yeah, my baby daddy, amigo, your baby daddy, a zero. I'd be upset <laughs> if, if, I, if I wasn't the amigo in question. <laughs> I'd be upset. Uh, but like <laughs> upset to the point of wanting to physically uh, threaten somebody. First of all, there, under no circumstances, I'm not a street nigga. I know people always get that confused. I, but I you're put not? That, nah, man. I put that life behind me because I, I killed that man. I got a body on me. You got a body on me? I you? got a body on me, man. I killed that <laughs> man and I regret it. I'm, I'm fighting demons. Yeah. Also, why is, why is Rod Wave so sad? He's not. He's not sad. No, they he they asked him that on uh on his interview I think with uh um on Apple and he's like no man I'll be having a good time. Hold on, Josh, I'm gonna play you this song. You tell me he's not sad. It's just it's just music, man. Take away my fame. Let me keep my song on. Smiling on the 
outside, inside, dying, listening to a grown man crying. This is my niece's favorite artist, Mine? and I said he's so sad. Is that Eddie? We got Paramore uh, samples. Eddie? Maybe he's man, high. It's, it's honestly, bro, it's beautiful to watch the journey, man. I'm happy for you. All right, man. All right, cool. Everybody's happy. Maybe all right. My high. niece is uh, also. I love Broadway. Her, that is his favorite, her favorite artist. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't familiar with his music. And then I, I put two and two together. I said, baby, you all right. That's exactly what I said just <laughs> like that, Kevin. <laughs> you okay? You okay, Bakari? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is you all right? You know who loves Broadway? Oh, Greg. Greg? He's a fan of Broadway. He loves the, the, the singing streets, man. Greg? Ask him. Absolutely. The singing streets? Mm -hmm. oh, bless everybody's heart. Uh, uh, maybe he was high in that interview, and that's why he was happy. Broadway? Yeah. You guys accidentally got high last week. Tell him what happened, Angel. No, nah, tell him what happened. I'm going to tell them. Stop. Tell them what happened, Stop Angel. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> so if you go back... Because this is this is Patreon that I'm talking to live. If you go back to our bonus episode last week, I was drinking tea. Okay. And it was a tea that I have drank a couple of times. It is a uh, THC in, uh, infused tea. It has uh, Mary Jane in it. And it's THC. Yeah. I like that. Hey. I to, no, 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 I've no, had no. it before, in, uh, but I would have it at night and I would just go to bed. Like that's what would happen. <laughs> so I was like, "Bet this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing too crazy." So I was like, "But I always take it at night." So I said, "You know what? I'm gonna have it during the day. I have a busy day on Friday. I know I'm going to be sh like a little stressed. Let me mellow myself out. I have three meetings. I have therapy, and then I have another meeting. <laughs> now, mind you, I then go home. No, no, no. Oh, we do the episode, God. and I drank two cups of it. It's same bag. I steeped it twice, though." Not the double steep angel. Yeah, I drank a, I drank two cups of it. Left, ran errands, went home. My husband, he was, uh, he was there. He's laying on the couch. He was like, "Come here." And so I go to lay on top of him, right? And I'm laying there, and I can hear the TV. So my head is facing down between the crease of his neck in the pill in the couch, and I can hear the TV. And this was the first thing that let me know something's up. Three or four seconds went by, and I could not account for what happened in those. Three <laughs> A time lapse. I was like, what just happened? And then I was like, why are you holding tension in your neck, Angel? And I was like, just relax, sink, sink. And I could feel myself. It was almost like I was doing a zoom in camera and zoom out and zoom in. And then I was like, open your eyes to stop whatever is happening. And I opened my eyes. So mind you, I'm in the crease of his neck in the couch is here and the pillows here. I open my eyes and I say to myself in my head, am I in a cave? <laughs> Because I don't see light. I say, am I in a cave? And I said, as soon as I heard the thought in my head, I said, oh, no, out loud. Marcus said, what? I said, oh, no. He said, what is wrong? I said, I'm high. <laughs> he was like, did you have some of the tea? I said, yes, but this has never happened. <laughs> So you usually be high sleep yes, having I crazy yes. dreams. <laughs> so I'm now having to take business meetings. Uh, no. High as a goddamn on <laughs> kite. I'm like, mm-hmm. That's, that's that rapturous angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, no. I had to end my therapy session early because all I could feel was the back of my neck. I said, I got to go to sleep. I said, this is, uh, you know what? We'll talk again next week. I need to go to sleep. That's what you told them. I didn't tell her that I was no, high. not that you were high, but you told them you really ended the call. I ended my therapy session early. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, everything's fine. Everything <laughs> just for I, I just oh eyes low. Everything's fine because my a inner Zoom child having a great time. <laughs> Marcus surely recorded me because I was free. I said, Marcus, stop it. It would be funny to have therapy high. Like, how do you feel? I 
feel very good <laughs> about my life. Just sipping and sipping. Just had no idea. If I would have only had one cup, I would have been fine. I would have been where I thought I was going to be. One cup of tea, I would be fine for therapy. Give second, me two cups of tea. <laughs> I said, and what? This is why I don't like it. This is because I was like, okay, enough now. <laughs> That's what. Enough of this. I texted Josh and Kevin because they knew what tea I had, and I was like, you guys, you guys. <laughs> I I am very 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 high. Oh my god! Oh, it was good though. It was good. All right. Well, also shout out to Colorado. They went three and zero. People Ooh, from all over the scare, world. Man. They were all over the world. The United States was watching. See y'all y'all don't live on the West Coast, so people was watching. We we watched West Coast it games. It was a seven. late finishing game. People man. was up at one a.m. Watching a Colorado, Dion's impact was immediate. They're getting, they're yeah. getting every weekend game of the week, pretty much. One thousand percent. Colorado hasn't been flexed into the night game in probably twenty years. Wow. Colorado hasn't been good since probably when Josh was born. This is not a joke. Wow. They were last good in ninety four, ninety five. Josh was like two years old at the mm-hmm. time. That's the last time Colorado was good. They ain't been on TV in forever. Mm-mm. They ain't been flexing to unless a night they, game. Unless they played one of the big, uh, no, no, no. Unless they were just playing a, a high rate quote unquote, Pac-12 team, because they I, don't they don't get games like that. I only see Colorado games when I'm watching UW games, and they ain't mm-hmm. never been flexed yeah, into the mm-hmm. night game. Travis Hunter, who's the star player along with Dion Sun, got a cheap, a shot. very cheap, dirty. You know what? Hit. I think they should extend. Uh, the targeting rules for something like that as well. One thousand percent. They that kid been getting death threats. Oh no. They went to his Instagram. Now I went when I when that happened, That's terrible. I was at Tony's thing, so I missed it. And then I went back and looked at the highlights. And I said, Oh, let me find this baby's Instagram because I'm curious. Mm-hmm. While he was playing, they was lighting his Instagram up. By the time the game was over, his it comments was the first were quarter. Up. It was like it was yes. uh Yeah, it was really early in the game when it happened. He got that baby got a lacerated liver. A lacerated liver? This dude is like pretty much after he went out of bounds and the, and the play was done, they're s- slowing down the running. Um, the defender checked him, dropped his shoulder into his chest and lacerated his his liver. That This is why. And see, Kyle wants to play football. He and the crazy doing it. Oh, no, no, no. That baby, that baby oh. keep him safe. I am. That so Travis safe. Hunter came out and was like, it was a football play. It was it was football play. He did what he's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Dion said something about it too. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And also, somebody on the Patreon told me to stop playing videos from my phone. Let Josh play it. No. No, this is what we're doing. I like it's do great. This. It's great. I just want y'all guys. to hear, man. If y'all want to see it, y'all go on your own phone and watch it. This just so y'all can hear it, man. You feel me? Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. That game it. finished at like. 1130. I was so happy. I always hated Colorado State all that day. I've never heard of them before. Also, they're not in the Pac-12. That coach is quiet, too. All right. This is what Dion said about the kid. Out of pressure placed on us. Thank you. God bless. Make sure you... Let's pray for that kid, man. That's, that's, That's absurd for people to be threatening him. I don't mind getting death threats. I get them every week. But a kid, it's not good. Also, shout out to Josh. I forgot about this. Josh sent me the Prime sunglasses mm-hmm. from Blenders. Apparently, Dion made $1.2 million in a day mm-hmm. when they launched. Do you think I ordered two pair? Gold I want to get black. the gold ones. I just feel like it'd be too big for my face. I'm not going to wear it. baby, we shining. But you can all right, I'll, I'll get them for your work. You got to wear them for the golf course. You got to flex on it. You should oh, all come nice. out on stage in those. Prime time. So it's HTT 24. It's a prime time we event, baby. We should do a Denver stop. And have Coach no. Prime come? No, okay. No, not not there's a lot of things I'll do. <laughs> but not go to Denver. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, you love it that much. Never had a good show in Denver. Great people, fantastic pizza one time. Lawrence and Larimer, amazing black owned say, shop. Did we go to Denver? It smelled it like did. weed. It did. Well, Denver smells you can like weed. You smell it from the air. No. Yes, it's in the air. Not gonna happen. If Prime Time asked you to come, for us to come, I told Melissa I want to go to a game. Would you go in Colorado or would you go? Colorado. Come on, man. I I wish they were playing USC. They are playing USC. I mean, at USC. In two weeks. Yeah, but it's at USC. I mean, it's at Colorado. 
Uh, I want to go to that game. I think Melissa's out oh. of town. Um, and people were like, why y'all didn't go to, why y'all wasn't watching Jackson State games? Jackson State games weren't on ESPN all the time. They was on college game day, I think, one time. Colorado's last three games have been televised. Mm. That ain't happened. Th three games televised every, in forever. Every game will be televised. Now, these next lose. two games, we are, we're in trouble now. I'm worried. Who are they we playing? got Oregon and we got USC back to back with no Travis Hunter. That's that's, that's some real teams. Cam. They were gonna be in trouble with Travis Hunter. I'm gonna be torn as to who to root for. We was for, gonna be in SC, trouble. SC game, I'm rooting right. for Colorado ex for ex for everybody for every game except for UW. I love y'all. Ball in the beautiful up in 15. Yeah. Take a shower if you haven't. Yeah. God bless you. Got keep you. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. There's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.